This program is brought to you by Emory University. Well, it's hard to know exactly what it meant. Uh, it, it may not have meant just one thing, but the question seemed to be, or the, at least the idea seemed to present itself, that when you really looked to the Bible for things about human flourishing or the good life, uh, that you came away with something that was a good bit more complex and variegated than, uh, you know, lots of money. Um, and lots of free time and lots of pleasure. What I think about the prosperity emphases, you know, the simplistic ones, especially the prosperity gospel, is that it's a greatly abbreviated, pigeonized version of the full language of Scripture. I'm worried about that because those messages are often very powerful precisely because of their simplicity and also uh, wildly popular. Uh, they can sell a lot of books, they can gain a lot of fame, they can get a lot of uh, people listening because they promise a lot. But in final analysis, I think they promise more than they can deliver. God is happy in many parts of the Bible, happy with humans, and cares about their well-being and flourishing. I mean, already in the first chapter of Genesis, God creates a very good creation and seems very satisfied with the work God has done. So it's a rather unfortunate development that Christian theology and readers of the Bible have focused over much on the wrath or negative aspects of God, which are, to be sure, there, but to the expense of these other, uh, other passages that are clearly about God's own happiness and God's happiness in human happiness. One of the great texts that, about happiness in the Bible, particularly with Jesus, is the Beatitudes, where Jesus says things like, blessed are the poor in spirit, you know, uh, this is definitely a redefinition of, of happiness, and in Luke's gospel, it's not the poor in spirit, as in Matthew, it's blessed are the poor, period. Uh, that's a very much a redefinition of happiness, again, away from hedonistic sort of categories or categories of happiness solely in terms of pleasure, in terms of, of, of meaning, virtue, and so on and so forth. It's crucial that, that we don't think of the Bible solely in terms of this sort of a life here is miserable and just to be suffered through with the hope of eternal bliss in the future. A religion is not just a matter of fire insurance, you know, keeping one from burning in hell. Because the Bible has all this rich material about um, family and friends and food and drink and clothing and, you know, being provided for and whatnot and concern for those who are not provided for. So that clearly it's not just a matter of the eternal uh, or the, the, the beyond or the afterlife, but there's rigorous attention to the now, which means that matters of the pleasurable life, even, even the hedonistic life, matter. Uh, in Christian theology, the high point in, uh, of the New Testament and the, and the church calendar is, is the Easter event and the celebration in many ways of Good Friday. The fact that Jesus' crucifixion could be de understood and defined with the adjective good is a vignette or a, a, an example of how what we're talking about in an event like that is far from a simplistic understanding of good. Uh, and, and that's the kind of deep wrestling with the meaning of happiness that we need to have when we approach a, a complex document like the Bible. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.